Hi, it is Kat. I am back and I am filming a TBR video for July. So just because I haven't been filming on booktube doesn't mean I haven't been watching everyone's videos. And there was a specific video that made me think I want to film again. So shout out uh, to Avi from Avi Club and also Bert from Past Story Time because uh, they were talking about a readathon they're doing and I just thought that sounded so fun and an easy way for me to get back into filming. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna talk about my July TBR, which has to do with a readathon and also my library checkouts. So let's get started. So I was watching Avi's video. I will leave her links down below. Uh, her channel is Avi Club and she's talking about the Giallo readathon uh, hosted by Bert at Pastory Time and Alex at the Bookibus, and it just sounded so fun because I've never heard of Giallo before. So Giallo is yellow in Italian, and it has to do with a certain genre of mystery, thriller, crime books and movies um, that were produced, and I'd never heard of this before. I don't read vintage horror or crime. It's not really my cup of tea. However, I do love a good theme. <laughs> so I'm more than willing to read modern like crime mystery thriller uh, to fit the themes. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the prompts. So number one is Giallo. Read yellow on the cover. So for this one, I want to read Butter by Asako Yuzuki. This is a Japanese novel in translation, translated by Polly Barton. So this is about a female gourmet cook who is also a serial killer and a journalist who is intent on cracking her case. I think the cover is absolutely perfect for this readathon in so many ways. The second prompt is the bird with the crystal plumage, an animal in the title or on the cover. So for this prompt, I have two books. One is The Earthquake Bird by Susanna Jones. This is about a young woman who is working abroad in Tokyo when one of the young women who has been showing her the ropes and showing her around the city is brutally murdered and she is suspected of having murdered her. The second book for this prompt is Hawk Mountain by Connor Habib. This has to do with an English teacher who is being gaslit by a charismatic high school bully. Um, and it's a tale of deception, manipulation, and murder set in a remote location. And this was recommended really, really highly by a lot of people that I really love and have similar reading tastes to on booktube over the past few years. So I thought it fit the theme perfectly. It's in the title and on the cover. So the next prompt is the hardest one for me, which I didn't think it would be. This is All the Colors of the Dark read a book with a color in the title. So I just like don't have that. Or I do, I guess. I had a few, but they're not anywhere close to mystery thriller. They're like mermaid books. And I was like, that's not what we're going for. So for this prompt, I did find two after honestly way too much looking. Um, one is Concert of the Crime Queen by Persephone Black. So this is fitting in with the crime. It's not really mystery thriller, it's more crime dark romance, um, but I do think it fits this, the theme because it's very stylish. The main character, one of the main characters is known for like wearing black and it does have erotic elements as well as being set in the mob in Chicago. So the crime elements are absolutely there. In the first book, which is Captive of the Crime Queen, you're following Hades, who is the syndicate leader, uh, and then this other character who she stole from her wedding to get back at her estranged family. And she's keeping her captive in her basically crime compound. So obviously because this is the second one, I'm not going to say what it's about because I don't want to spoil the first one. But the first one, if you're looking for an FF romance that isn't like sugary sweet, I would recommend it. The other book, which I'm gonna kind of put in here, even though it's not exactly perfect, is Dark Mode um, by Ashley Callaghan Blunt. I picked it up from an op shop recently. This is definitely um, a crime mystery thriller, and I'm using dark because it's a, it's a shade, I guess, of what you would say is saturation or color. Um, so this is about Regan, 
who lives offline because of something that happened in her past when one day she stumbles upon a shocking murder in a Sydney laneway and the victim looks just like her. As more murders start happening and she realizes the victims all look like her, she wonders if someone from her past is coming back to get her. So uh, I also think that this fits the theme perfectly and dark I am just pretending has to do with colors. So um, the last one, the last prompt is the Red Queen Kills Seven Times, a violent word in the title. Now this one was the easiest for me because <laughs> I do love a good dark book. So I have a lot that uh, fit and one I want to talk about is um, a library checkout that I cannot wait to pick up. This is What I Would Do To You by Georgia Harper. This is an Australian release and I think it sounds so perfect. I want to read it so bad. Um, I wanted to go pick it up today but the library is closed on Sunday so I will be picking it up tomorrow. Um, this is set in a futuristic Australia. The death penalty is back, but if the victim's family wants the perpetrator to die, they have to do it themselves. You are granted 24 hours alone in a room with the condemned. No cameras, no microphones, just whatever punishments they decide befits the crime. So you're following one of those situations and what happens. So it fits perfectly with the theme and the darkness and what I would do to you is so ominous. I know it's not one word, but it fits the vibe. So another one I have for this prompt is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. This one really fits the theme because of Boy Parts and I had started to try to read this before I got this much in, which is like quite a lot, but I put it down and I have erased it from my memory. <laughs> so we're gonna be starting back over from zero. This is about a photographer who asks men with unusual looks to be her subject and I think she gets just a little interesting with her techniques and there may or may not be horror and gore in here. I'm hoping that there is due to the title. And the last one also for the dark word in the title prompt is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. So you wouldn't think hunger would be <laughs> a scary word but she's a cannibal, so it's a scary word. So this has to do with a food writer and critic who is very, very meticulous and picky about her food. She also has some um, cannibalistic tendencies. So um, I asked for this years ago for Christmas um, because I just love that cover. I love a good dark cover. Um, and I have never picked it up, so <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Timing. Um, I'm also going to talk about a few of the checkouts that I have from the library that I'll be picking up tomorrow that are really some of my most highly anticipated. Um, one is Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Wiswell. I think this sounds so directly up my alley. So not only is it sapphic, it also has to do with um, a monster who falls in love. So it says, Shesha Shen has made a mistake fatal to all monsters. So she is a shapeshifter who kind of takes an amorphous form uh, until one day when she is interrupted by hunters and she constructs a body from the remains of past meals. A metal chain for a backbone, borrowed bones for limbs, and a bear trap as an extra mouth. However, the hunters chase her out of her home and off a cliff. Badly hurt, she's found and nursed back to health by Homily, a warm-hearted human who mistakes her as a fellow human. So she realizes that Homily is just her type of girl, the perfect person to co-parent in an ideal place to lay her eggs so that the young could devour Homily from the inside out. However, as she grows closer to her, she realizes that that's not how humans show their love and that Maybe killing your girlfriend isn't the best way to love her. I am so excited for this one. Um, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was gonna be one of my most anticipated of the year. Um, and I am really, really looking forward to it. Another one that I have checked out from the library is Tell Me I'm Worthless, uh, which is by Allison Rumfit. This one I have heard really good things about from people on booktube. I don't know that much about it, other than that, it's about a girl who's haunted by something that happened at an abandoned house and then she goes back there past the keep out sign 
and dark things happen. Um, it is shelved as horror and queer and gothic, which is just everything that I love in a book. So the last book I want to talk about is The Memory of Animals by Claire Fuller. I wish that the cover was the other cover. This cover, I'll leave it up for you because it's more stunning. Uh, this is following Nephi, who is a young woman who made a mistake and she is in debt. So in order to pay off her debt, she agrees to a vaccine trial in a secure London uh, like facility. When she's in there, the outside world goes silent and they lose all communication. Um, and during that time, she's introduced to pioneering and controversial technology, which allows her to revisit memories from her childhood. Um, so intoxicated by the freedom of the past and the chance to reunite with those she has loved and lost, she turns away from the present. But in this new world where survival rests on the bond between strangers, is she jeopardizing a chance at her future survival? I think it sounds great. I love speculative fiction, especially with like little sci-fi elements. That was my TBR for July. I am excited to be back and I hope that you all have been well and tell me what you have been reading. Tell me what you love. <laughs> tell me what you love down below. And also I'm leaving links for all of the readathon stuff down below as well. Um, yeah, and I will see you in another video soon. Lots of love. Toodaloo. <laughs>